dreamers welcome back it is Friday which means it is time for another weekly makeup basket and this week I've started on the challenge I gave myself to go through all of my makeup and really see what it is that I really love and what's in my collection that just doesn't need to be there I also tried out a couple of new products this week that I hadn't tried out before one is brand new to my collection and the other I've had for a few weeks and I'm not really sure why I never tried it. Um, the first thing, what I've been priming my face with, and I found this at CVS. It's a new line that they have. They've got some skincare and I don't really, there we go. They have some skincare and they have some face products. I definitely want to get more. I only got two products from the line. I got this, which is the Inlight Super Face. When it rains, it pours, which is a pore refining facial serum. This is a serum and primer in one, and it's just a white primer, and it's very, very silky. Um, I would say that it's kind of like a watered down version of the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It doesn't have that gel feel. Um, it has a very serum-y feel. If you've used um, like the Shiseido, the, the little red serum, it feels like that, that very cooling, moisturizing, just very soft texture, but it helps to blur your pores and it makes your makeup stay all day. I'm really in love with this. I want to say that this was 17 or $18 and you do get one fluid ounce. Um, it also has, it says it contains soy proteins and caffeine. So I've, I've just really enjoyed this product. I also got a facial mask, which I will talk about in a different video that I'm absolutely in love with too. So I will be picking up some more things from this line. If you've picked anything up from the line and tried it, leave me a comment down below and let me know because I would love to know what else to get. For my foundation, I sort of moved everything off of the top and looked down to the bottom of my foundation pile and I pulled out my L'Oreal True Match Lumi foundation. I have this in the color Shell Beige, um, which is C4 Cool. I used to really, really love this foundation. It was one of the very first drugstore foundations that I fell in love with and I just couldn't get enough of. But after using some of the other foundations that have come out lately, there are a few things that I've noticed about this product that make me love it a little bit less. First off, the dewy complexion that it gives you I think is a little bit over the top and so I've done actually quite a lot to tone down the dewiness of this foundation. We're really not into the hot season and it actually rained all week so it was unseasonably cool here. It was in the 50s and so that's kind of why I pulled this out. This doesn't really work for me in the summer because my skin gets a little bit oilier and even though my skin has <laughs> not started to get oilier already, I noticed that this was breaking down on me. About halfway through the day it was really broken down on my chin and throughout the day it really broke up around my nose and by the end of the day, it had really broken up a lot of places. So I'm really disappointed because I used to love this so much and I just I just don't know what the deal is. I tried a couple of different powders this week and it just seemed to do the same thing no matter what. So if you have a little trick for this, let me know. The other thing that drives me crazy about this is I have no idea how much product is left in the bottle because I can't tell and I like to see how much is left. For my concealer I've been using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. This is in the color medium. I do like, um, and I can't remember the name of it, um, but there's one that's like neutralizer or something like that. I like that one better than this one, but when I went to go replace it last time they didn't actually have neutralizer so I thought I would try the medium. It does work great but it's not as good as the, I think it's called the neutralizer. If that's not correct, then I will leave the actual name in the comments down below. So when I finish this one off, I will be buying the neutralizer again next time, but that is a fantastic drugstore foundation. One of the main things that I've been using this week to set my face is 
in this Wet n Wild contour palette. I've actually, this is uh, Dolce Du Leche, and I've been using this lighter powder to uh, set my foundation and my under eyes. I've used it to set my under eyes quite a few times, but I decided to try it on top of my foundation. It's just a really pretty powder, and it did a great job of setting my foundation. It worked just as well as um, my airspun powder or the Milani translucent powder. It worked just as well as anything else. And then I was using this as my contour color, which is just a really, really nice sort of bronze color, but it's a little, it's completely matte, so it works really great for a contour color. I absolutely love this palette. It's $5. If you haven't picked one up, there's also a deeper color, um, and I can't remember what the name of it is, but it has a deeper color bronzer and like a banana colored powder. So I do want to pick that up at some point because I love banana powders and I might be able to use that darker color for bronzing up during the summer, but it definitely wouldn't work for me as a contour color. The only thing that drives me crazy about this palette is the amount of fallout that it has because it has some serious fallout. For my blush, this is the other new product that I was using this week. I got this in the um, It Cosmetics QVC bundle that they had last month. This is the Bye Bye Pores Naturally Pretty Blush, and it is what I have on right now. I'm not sure why I didn't try this before now. I think I just kind of got lost in the shuffle of trying the other things, but this is just a really, really pretty blush color and I've I've quite enjoyed it I don't think that it really does anything for my pores more than the primer did so I'm not really sure it's great for for hiding pores but it is a very beautiful blush and it blends out very very nicely for my highlight this week I have just been stuck on these uh, makeup revolution the vivid baked highlights this one is in Peach Lights, which is the one that I pretty much used all week long. I really, really like these highlights. They're just, they're just so, so pretty. Um, they have a, a decent amount of shimmer to them without being overboard. Um, I do find that if I don't use a setting spray, that they do kind of fade on me and disappear throughout the day, but if I use a setting spray, then I really don't have an issue with them fading away. For my setting spray this week, I, since I'm talking about it, I was using the L'Oreal Infallible. This one is absolutely fantastic. It's like $10 and you get 3.4 fluid ounces. I think that this works just as good as the Scandinavia or the Urban Decay, I, I really don't see a whole lot of difference in setting sprays for me personally. So I'm pretty much gonna go with a drugstore one every single time. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I'm missing something that I used this week. Where did it go? There it is. Um, for brows this week, I was using the Bodyography I got this in a subscription box a while back. This is Bodyography Brow Trio in Essential. I really like this because these both of these darker colors work really well for me. Um, I use this one as a brow highlight a couple of times, but I usually use my eyeshadow as a brow highlight, so I really, really enjoy that brow powder. Really, most of the time, that's all that I need. Um, but, you know, sometimes I do a little bit more. And in fact, I will have a um, brow tutorial coming up on Monday. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that. Um, for eye primer this week, I've been using my Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which is one of my favorite primers of all time. I think that it's just very lightweight. It makes my shadow stick all day. And so I just really absolutely love it. This is, this is just the sample size though. Yeah, this is just a sample size. I don't have a full size right now. Um, for eyeshadow this week, I pulled out my Too Faced Natural Matte. And this is, these are all matte shades. And they're on the warm side, so this is the first palette that I pulled out to really start going through my eyeshadow and really considering 
do I want to keep this because I I just haven't grabbed for this this much and I'm not really sure why and as I was using this it this week I think that I discovered the reason why I haven't been grabbing for it that much and it's because it's a lot of browns and there's not really a whole lot of dark shades and so it's just not right in my comfort zone there's no black there's no purple there's no pink but I really, well, I guess there is, no, it's not really a pink, it's kind of a peach. But I did really enjoy the looks that I came up with this week. They're very, very different for me. Um, what I have on right now is from this palette. It is just a, a much different look than I'm used to. Um, I have this color Heaven all over my lid. I have Honey Butter as my transition color. I've got chocolate cookie in my outer corner and my crease, and then I've got honey butter all over my lid again. These colors are really very, very pretty, and they have a lot of pigment to it. They're exactly what you would expect from Too Faced eyeshadows. Um, they're just they're just very much more on the natural side, which is not the look that I usually go for. So I will be keeping this one in my collection. I probably will not get rid of very many of my high-end palettes, if any at all, but I do wanna make sure that I go through every single one of them and make note of why I like it or what I can do with it and really just dig into each palette and see what it is that I love about it and why I have it. For the rest of eyes, I've been using still that that Too Faced um, whatever this pencil is that I bought like a bazillion years ago and it's really close to being done so I will continue to use this for my tight lining until it runs out so you're going to see it every single week until then. Uh, for my lower lash line and then like today I have this on my upper lash line as well. I've been using my Kat Von D autograph pencil and this is in the color Immortal Love and it's just a rich brown color and it's worked really great with this palette so I've quite enjoyed it and that is a pencil that I really haven't ever used. I got it in that set of all the different colors and I've barely used it because it's brown. So I've really been trying to branch out on that. Then for my mascara, I've been using the Ultimate Lash Icon Volumizing Mascara by Fiona Styles. This is, oh, this mascara is so, so wonderful. First off, the packaging is amazing. I really, really like the brush on here. It just separates your lashes really well. This gives me incredible length. It gives me really good volume. It's probably, it's not the most volumizing mascara that I have, even though it is a volumizing mascara, but the length plus volume plus separation that I get makes it just very worthwhile and I absolutely love it. For lips this week, I was digging through my collection and I was looking at the bottom of my lip drawer thinking I just want to find something that I haven't worn in a very long time and I think I actually only swatched this and I've never even worn it. I got this in a subscription box. It's by Pacifica which you can get at Target and this is the Power of Love Powerful Color Natural Lipstick and this is a matte formula. It's actually a very comfortable matte which I'm really surprised about. It's what I have on my lips but that is what it looks like right there and it's just you know it's just a very simple lipstick but I've really enjoyed it it's very comfortable it stayed on a lot longer than I thought it would for it says this is natural minerals and usually when I hear something's natural minerals I just don't expect it to last all that long just because it's a mineral um, so it doesn't quite have you know sort of the lasting power but this actually has really fantastic lasting power Last thing is for nail polish this week, I am so stuck on this color. I just can't get over it. I've got it on my toes. I've got it on my fingers. This is OPI's Humidity, and this is from the New Orleans collection, and this is, well, and then I 
camera decides to go out of focus, this is what it looks like. Oh, it is just the perfect summer color. It's a peachy pink, so it really goes with everything. Whether I try, decide to do a warm look or a cool look, I don't have to sit there and go, oh, I'm wearing blue nail polish. I don't want to do a warm eye look. So it just goes with everything. It looks fantastic on my toes. It really doesn't peel and chip on me and I have that problem a lot with nail polish because I'm horrible at picking it off. If there's like the littlest spot that's coming up I will just peel it off and I really ha don't have that issue very much with this particular color and formula and so I'm just absolutely loving it. So that is everything for this week. I am going to dig back into the very bottom of my drawer and see what I can come up with to test out for next week. So far, I think that I am going, I'm definitely going to keep everything that I use this week with, I haven't made a decision on this True Match Lumi yet because it just really broke down on me all week long and I, I don't think that there's very much left in here. Um, and I, I can't get it open to figure it out and I don't want to break it. So I might try to, you know, work with this a little bit more and see if I can get it open and find out how much I have left in there. But I was just so disappointed in it this week breaking down on me. So, oh, I just can't decide. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll leave it a note in the comments down below if I can make a decision whether I want to keep it or not. So thank you guys so much for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!